Hi, my name is Shane, here with good friend Grayson. Excited to have a, a series of conversations together. Because I believe that we all want to have lives that are full of joy, peace, and purpose. That's the outcome we want. But do we recognize the inputs that affect the outcome? Do we recognize how our, our thinking, our mindset, leads to our emotions. Now I would just ask you to consider how's, how's your thinking? How are your emotions lately? Because the internal leads to the external. It's just part of how it works in life as much as we might try to separate these two areas of what we're thinking and then what we're experiencing and displaying. They're absolutely connected. And we believe the Bible has a lot to say about our thinking. There's this old adage that you become what you feed your mind. And so what is coming in, the inputs matter a lot. And we, and we believe, man, all of us have a, a filter of some sorts of how we're perceiving ourselves, the world around us, people, perceiving who God is. And, and if our filter is, is broken or, or our filter is, is not accurate, that's going to one, influence the input, which is then going to influence the output, this life of peace and purpose and joy that we all long for, our relationships. And so I think this is a really important conversation, especially now, excited to lean in together. Yeah, yeah, Shane, that's so, so true about filters. I wanna look at one of Jesus's filters today that he uses for how we process our thoughts. And I'm gonna to read to you from Matthew chapter six right now. Jesus says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now what's going on here, that is a very weird way to put things. <laughs> An evil eye, a good eye. In fact, a lot of Bible translations, they don't even put evil in there. They just say if your eye is bad. <laughs> uh, my wife's a veterinarian. I've seen her remove a lot of bad eyes before. <laughs> that is not what this is Quite talking about. Yeah, not <laughs> what this is talking about at all. And unfortunately for me, she shows me pictures too. So <laughs> this is not what Jesus is talking about. There's this whole conversation going on in this culture regarding an evil eye versus a good eye, to the point where even today, people in a Jewish context talk about an evil eye in, re in reference to Satan himself. Oh, wow. uh, so big conversation going on here. The Hebrew is ayin ra'ah. Ayin is eye, ra'ah is evil. It is the word for evil. On the flip side, you have ayin tova, which is good eye. And that word tova is the same thing. God looks at creation and says, it's good, it's good. He says, it's tov, it's tov, it's tov. Mm -hmm the good eye versus the evil eye. Another question I always had was, what does this have to do with money, with yeah. treasures in heaven? And here's kind of the answer to that riddle. A good eye is an eye where the way I view the world, because that's where I see the world through is my eye, it is full of this idea that the world is good and generous. Mm -hmm. I look at the world as if what's going to happen to me is going to be good. I'm expecting that people are gonna be generous. I'm expecting that I will always have enough because God will provide for me. An evil eye on the flip side says, no, 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 the life that I live is characterized by scarcity. Mm. I never have enough. I always am waiting for the other shoe to drop. Mm. And I don't think that God's gonna come through for me. I think that I need to pull myself up by my own bootstraps mm. and I have to live according to my own effort. Mm. Kind of like if it's gonna be, it's up to me, type yep. thinking. Okay. Yep, it, everything rests on my shoulders. Mm. So you have this idea of viewing the world generously or viewing it through scarcity. Kind of a way that we talk about that would be, oh, he's a half cup full kind of guy mm. or she's a half cup empty kind of woman. How do I approach the world? And what happens is if I believe that the world is going to give me scarcity, odds are that's what I'm going to, because I expect it, that's what I'm going to interpret everything as. If I believe that God is generous and good and that he's gonna provide everything I need, that's what I'm going to experience. Not only that, if I believe and I have that evil eye that says everything's going to be scarce, what's going to end up happening is I am going to be very stingy with the people in my life. I'm going to propagate this idea of 
there will never be enough, so I'm just gonna look out for my own interests. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Jesus's idea here. And the thing is, God created the world to work off of a principle of generosity. Mm -hmm. You look at the fruit of the trees and the crops, you look at the rain cycle that happens. Rain evaporates, it comes, it waters the earth and produces fruit again. You look at the sun that's burning for just because the sun burns. And what does it do? I am a solar powered human because I eat plants and I eat animals that eat plants. And the sun is so generous in bringing life to all of us. Creation is built around this. Mm. I can choose to accept it and live like my God is generous and he's gonna provide for me. Or I can say, you know what? I don't think, I don't think God's good. A great example of that recently and not meaning to touch any nerves here is toilet paper. <laughs> when COVID hit and there's just this crisis, mm. And we said, oh no, clearly the whole world is gonna run out of toilet paper and we're not gonna be able to go to the bathroom well. And so in that instance, if I am an ayin ra'ah, an evil eye person, I, odds are I'm gonna act out of insecurity. I'm gonna run out and I'm gonna load up my cart, clear out the shelves. If I have an eye that is good, that views the world as generous, I'm gonna trust that God and Charmin are going to provide for me. <laughs> that's that's the idea there. Uh, mm. And I know that a lot of times I'm tempted to think from scarcity, God is inviting us to say, no, I'm a generous, good God, and I mm. want to provide for you. That's really good. Yeah. I love that picture of creation displaying this generous cycle, if you will, that God created. He wove it into creation even. Yeah. Yeah. So Shane, that being said, I mean, what do you see as ways that, that that's good? How do we take it out and how do we apply it in yeah. our lives? Yeah. Well, I think one, like to realize that there's no like guilt or shame of recognizing, hey, I've, I've been mm -hmm. viewing the world, people with this scarcity mindset. Some of us is because we, our experiences or how we were raised, or there's a moment of, of trauma that like almost like touches a nerve there. It's like, so it's not like, you're a bad person <laughs> or you are evil because you've maybe had this filter. It's recognizing, okay, what is the right filter? And, and how, how do I change my thinking to lead to this life of purpose, peace, joy, and generosity? Like I, I want to not only be the recipient of generosity, but I want to be part of generosity in other people's lives as well. I want to make an impact. I want to make a difference. And so I think to begin to ask the question, what, what is impacting my filter? What, where, where is my filter grounded in? Hmm. Because it might be because of a life experience, it might be because of the way you were raised, what you were taught, what you were told. And it doesn't mean it, it wasn't present in your life. It just might not align with the heart of God and the hmm. character of God. And we want to filter our filter through mm -hmm. the heart and the character and the goodness of God and believe that he has purpose for us. He, he has good things for us. I mean, he's a good loving father who loves to give good gifts mm -hmm. to his children. And that's us and that we would perceive and believe that about the world around us. So encouragement is to think about what is your filter? What has kind of come together through life experience, through influences in your life, that have established your filter and how does that line up with the the way god invites us to perceive him perceive the world perceive other people um, and really kind of compare those against each other and and pray and ask god god is there anything in my filter that does not align with with your heart with your truth um, have that conversation with some people that you know well hmm. I mean, somebody that you're in relationship with and begin to unpack it even together of here's my filter what's lines up with God's heart in this, what do you see maybe that um, is is off from, from what God would, would have me perceive. So that's a conversation we'd love to encourage you to dig into personally, even write some of those things down, uh, have a conversation with someone that you